What's up guys, Aaron here, and I'm sorry, but we need to talk about a very scary word, recession. Just the other day, US Q1 GDP unexpectedly declined 1.4% and absolutely fell off a cliff from the 6.9% growth rate in Q4. Analysts completely missed the mark when they predicted a 1% growth rate in Q1. Goldman Sachs sees about a 35% chance of negative growth in a year from now, all while the Fed is tightening monetary policy significantly, with a high probability of a 50 basis point hike in May, and reducing its $9 trillion balance sheet at a rate of $95 billion a month, sending the S S&P 500 down 12% and the Nasdaq down 20% for the year, now firmly in bear market territory. As scary as this might sound, there's still some places to hide in the market. So in this video, I'm going to show you five best stocks to buy in May that are kind of recession proof and could protect your money as we move towards a recession. Stock number one is McDonald's. McDonald's has a market cap of $190 billion and has a dividend yield of 2.2%. It's trading at $2.55 a share with a 52-week range of 217 to 271, rising 10% over the last year. As for the chart, you can see that McDonald's has been trading up and to the right for the past year, topping out at 269 in January and selling off with the rest of the market, but bounced back nicely. Looking at the fundamentals, we can see that McDonald's has a PE ratio of 25 and a price to sales ratio of 8.3. As for profitability, they have a net margin of 32.5%. Over the next year, they're expected to see sales growth of 5.4% and see EPS growth of 11.1%. McDonald's also has total cash on his balance sheet of $4.7 billion, with total debt of $49 billion. Analysts currently have a buy rating on the stock with an average price target of $2.79, which is 9% above current levels. Bottom line is that McDonald's provides very low-cost food that's very inelastic. People aren't really going to cut out their McDonald's consumption if their income is harmed. If anything, they might move towards more McDonald's. They have a long history and have weathered many recessions before. In 2008, they fell only about 20%, vastly outperforming the market and were very quick to recover and make new highs when the broader market recovered in 2009. Stock number two is Walmart. Walmart has a market cap of $430 billion and has a dividend yield of 1.4%. It's trading at $156 a share with a 52-week range of $132 to $160, rising 12% over the last year. As for the chart, you can see that Walmart has been trading sideways with some volatility for most of the last year. Before really taking off in February, looking at the fundamentals, we can see that Walmart has a PE ratio of 32 and a price to sales ratio of just 0.8. As for profitability, they have a net margin of 2.4%. Over the next year, they're expected to see sales growth of 3.4% and see EPS growth of 7.6%. Walmart also has total cash on its balance sheet of $14.7 billion with total debt of $58 billion. Analysts currently have a buy rating on the stock with an average price target of $167, which is 7% higher from current levels. Bottom line is that Walmart sells essential goods at very low prices. They have amazing infrastructure that's all set up, so they're able to meet demand. During a recession, they might even see people move towards shopping at Walmart more often, as people try to cut out more expensive options like Whole Foods, for example, to try to save some more money. For the 2000 bear market, they only fell about 33%, and during the 2008 bear market, they were actually up about 50%, while the broader market fell 50%. Stock number three is Pepsi. Pepsi has a market cap of $245 billion and has a dividend yield of 2.4%. It's trading at $177 a share with a 52-week range of $141 to 177 rising 23% over the last year. As for the chart, you can see that Pepsi has been trading up and to the right for the past year, topping out at 175 in February, and then selling off with the rest of the market, but bounced back nicely to its all-time highs. Looking at the fundamentals, we can see that Pepsi has a PE ratio of 24 and a price to sales ratio of just 3.1. As for profitability, they have a net margin of 12.6%, which is in line with the industry. Over the next year, they're expected to see sales growth of 4.2% and EPS growth of 8.7%. Pepsi also has total cash in its balance sheet of $5.9 billion with total debt of $42 billion. Analysts currently have a strong buy rating on the stock with an average price target of $178, which is right where we're trading right now. Bottom line again is that drinks are a staple. Drinks is a pretty inelastic good that people will continue to spend money on because relatively it's not that much money. People will always need drinks and a recession is not going to change that. In 2000, they fell about 30% and in the 2008 bear market, they fell about 38%, but they outperformed the market and recovered quickly. Stock number 
for is Kimberly Clark. Kimberly Clark has a market cap of 47 billion and has a dividend yield of 3.3%. Is trading at 142 a share with a 52 week range of 117 to 145, rising 7% over the last year. As for the chart, you can see that Kimberly Clark has been trading sideways until January, where it sold off with the rest of the market, but has since recovered back to its highs. Kimberly Clark has a PE ratio of 27.4 and a price to sales ratio of just 2.4. As for profitability, they have a net margin of 8.9%, which is below the industry and the S&P. Over the next year, they're expected to see sales growth of 2.6% and EPS growth of 18%. Kimberly Clark also has total cash in its balance sheet of 240 million with total debt of 9 billion. Analysts currently have a hold rating on the stock with an average price target of 133, which is 6% below where we're trading right now. Once again, bottom line is that Kimberly Clark sells essential goods. People aren't really going to give up Kleenex and pull-ups for their babies if we go into recession. Those are both goods that people will still need to buy no matter what happens. During both the 2000 and 2008 recession, Kimberly Clark fell about 38% and basically stayed in the range from 68 to 41, from 2000 to 2011. Stock number five is Costco. Costco has a market cap of 250 billion and has a dividend yield of 0.6%. It's trading at 562 a share with a 52 week range of 368 to 612, rising 50% over the last year. As for the chart, you can see that Costco has been trading up into the right for the entire year. They had a brief pullback in January, but that was just a short-term blip. Costco has a PE ratio of 45 and a price to sales ratio of just 1.2. As for profitability, they have a net margin of 2.6%, which is below the industry and the S&P. Over the next year, they're expected to see sales growth of 8% and see EPS growth of 10%. Costco also has total cash in its balance sheet of 12 billion, with total debt of 9.2 billion. Analysts currently have a buy rating on the stock with an average price target of 5.91, which is 5% higher than where we are right now. The reason to buy Costco is is the same as Walmart. They offer great goods at low prices and people might gravitate towards that even more in a recession. During the 2008 crash, they fell about 40%, outperforming the market by about 10%. And then they had a nice recovery to all-time highs. As you can see from these stocks, they're not growth stocks. They're not going to be growing 20% a year but they are companies that people rely on for their daily goods and are very stable and perfect for a recession. The goods and services that they sell are pretty inelastic and don't really rely that much on the broader economy. People will always need their goods and that's what makes it perfect for a recession stock. It's good to have these in the back of your mind if we need to get a little bit more defensive. All right, guys, those are your five recession-proof stocks. If you like the video, check out this one right here or this one over here. My name is Aaron and I hope I see you in the next video, but until then, peace.